Hey everybody, it's Rob here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Drawtight Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2020 Chevrolet Bolt. Now our trailer hitch is going to do a lot of different things for you. It's really going to open up a lot of doors so we can transport gear with us and make it a little bit easier rather than trying to put everything in the inside of our Bolt. And I personally think if you're going to be using it for a cargo carrier or a bike rack, I prefer a hitch mounted bike rack or cargo carrier rather than a roof mounted one because I personally don't like the idea of lifting my bike over my head and having to get so close to the car to get it up there. So this just makes it a lot easier. We don't have to lift everything up. But it is a class one hitch, so it is gonna give us that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. But regardless of how you're gonna be using your hitch, all the accessories are gonna mount through the hitch pin hole here on the side. Now our hitch is gonna accept a standard half inch pin and clip. Now they're not gonna come with the hitch, but you can find them here at eTroller.com, along with some locking devices to make sure they're secure and anti-rattle devices to cut down on that annoying rattling sound when we're driving down the road. Now a few things to keep in mind, if you are gonna be doing some light duty towing, there is a specific drawbar that is made for our hitch. Now it is gonna be sold separately, but again, you can find it here at eTroller.com. The other thing is, is you gotta have a spot to hook up your safety chains. Now on our hitch, we have a loop style right at the bottom of the receiver tube, really easy, open to get to. So if you have what I consider most normal size hooks, you've got plenty of room to get them on, take them off. You don't have to worry about even potentially hitting the bottom of our car. Plenty of room there. Even if you have those really large hooks, same thing. There's plenty of room. Don't have to worry about any kind of interference or potentially scratching our car. If you're looking for a hitch for your bolts, you obviously have something in mind that you want to do. Again, maybe you just want to take some bikes with you to the park, maybe you're going on a road trip, you need some extra space. But regardless, the weight capacity is going to be a very important thing because we want to make sure that the hitch is up to the task that we put it to. Our hitch is going to have a 200 pound tongue weight, and that's going to be the maximum of downward pressure at the end of the receiver tube. Now, 200 pounds, we'll be able to carry a few bikes with us and load up a decent amount of gear on some of the smaller cargo carriers. Our hitch is also going to have a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. Now how that's how much the hitch can pull, but that does include the trailer and the load we have on it. Now with all those numbers in mind, you do want to double check your Bolt's owner's manual because we don't want to exceed the manufacturer's rating. Now, I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you whenever you're looking for accessories for your new hitch, whether that's a bike rack or a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's going to be right about four and a half inches. Now that measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you can fold them up into the stored position and not make contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be just over 11 inches. Now at that height, I would recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier with a raised shank. That way we can get a little bit more ground clearance out of it because our bolt does sit rather low to the ground. Now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's go through the installation process together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. To begin our installation, we want to come to the back of our bolt and we're going to come to the very bottom of the bumper. Now on either side of the center, we're going to have a couple push pins that are holding that bottom plastic against the body. We need to pull those out. So you can grab yourself a trim panel tool or a flat blade screwdriver. Now there is a small notch that's in the center of the push pin. You want to take your tool, come underneath that center section, and pry that out. See how it kind of sticks out? It'll take all the tension off of it. Then we want to come underneath the base and pull the rest of the push pin out. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the one over here. And once we have those out, I kind of want to just test to make sure you can pull out on the fascia enough so we get a little bit of room and a little bit of wiggle room to pull out on it. Now we want to come underneath our bolt. We're going to move to the side to where we can find the frame rail. Now we're going to have the same mounting locations and same holes on both frame rails, but you should have a large hole that's about right at the back of the rear tire. This is going to be one mounting location. It'll be the same thing on the other side. So to get our hardware in place, we want to grab our pull wire, take the coiled end, we'll grab a square hole spacer block, we'll slide it over the coiled end, and we'll grab a carriage bolt out of our kit, and we're going to thread it onto the end of the wire. You want to take one piece at a time and push the bolt into the frame, and then we'll push the block into the frame. 
want to pull back down on the pull wire so the bolt can come down, engage the block, and go all the way through the frame. Now we are going to have that same hole, so we want to repeat that on the other side. Now if we come to the very back of the bumper, and we come in a little bit, we can find where our frame rail meets the actual bumper structure. We're going to have a bolt going through with a nut on the outside. We want to pull that nut out, but we want to hold on to it. So we'll grab a 15 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and loosen that up. And again, you want to hold on to that nut because we're actually going to be using this stud as one of our mounting locations on each side. So we'll move over to the driver's side and pull that nut off as well. With the hardware in place, we can get ready to put the hitch up. Before we put it in though, we are going to have to make a relief cut so that the receiver tube can come out the bottom of the fascia here. Now, I already went ahead and marked out the dimensions and the area that I'm going to be trimming. And they do give you a pretty good diagram in the instructions. What I suggest though is that you always cut a little bit smaller than they recommend in the instructions because we can always go back and make it a little bit larger if we need to, but we can't put any material back. Now this is just plastic, so you can take a razor knife, make several passes going deeper and deeper on each one. You can use a pair of tin snips, just about whatever you have. I'm gonna be using a rotary tool just so I can cut it out real quick and make some nice clean cuts. We can always come back with a razor knife or a file and clean up all the excess plastic. And then we can take some rubbing alcohol and wipe off the paint from the marker I used earlier as well. Now it is a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you lift up your hitch. But you want to take your pull wires and coming from the top, we're going to go down through the mounting hole on our hitch. And we lift it up. And again, kind of want to pull out on the fascia so we can go right behind it. Make sure that bolt comes through the hitch and we're going to slide the other mounting location right over that factory stud. Now it should hold itself in place pretty well if it's on that stud but we can take the factory nut and loosely install it on each side and then for the carriage bolts you want to remove the pull wire and on each one we're going to take a conical tooth washer there's little teeth on there. I'm gonna make sure those are pointing up towards the hitch. I slide it over our bolt. And I like to kind of push on the bolt with the washer. It kind of helps keep it still so we can get the hex nut installed. Again, that's gonna be the same combination on both sides. So we're gonna to move to the other side and get the rest of the hardware in place. For the hex nuts that are on the carriage bolts dropping down through the frame, you wanna grab a 11 16 socket and we're gonna snug them up. And once you have those tightened, you do want to come back and tighten up the factory nuts that were on the lower bumper section. And we're going to use that same 15 millimeter socket. Now you do want to make sure you come back with a torque wrench and torque all the hardware down and you'll find those numbers in your instructions. You just do want to pay attention because the factory bolts do have a different value than the hex nuts for the carriage bolts. But we're going to go ahead and repeat that for all of our remaining hardware. And the final step is just going to be putting those two push pins back in at the bottom of the fascia so it's not flopping around when we're driving. And one thing you do want to keep in mind when you're putting these push pins back in, leave that center sticking out still. We'll take the base, put the base of it in, and then push the center in to lock it down. But once you have that last push pin in, that'll finish up your installation and your look at the Draw Tight Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2020 Chevrolet Bolt.